Ladies and gentlemen, nobody wants to lose at chess. Even more embarrassing is if you lose in seven moves or less and somebody makes a YouTube video about it, like this one. I put timestamps for each game in the description so you can jump to whichever one you want. If seeing people play chess very badly is triggering for you, well, then why did you click on this video? What are some of the shortest checkmates in chess history? There are eight ways black might checkmate white on the second move, if white plays incorrectly. That's the fastest possible checkmate. But I'm talking more about checkmates that have occurred in actual historical games. I went on chessgames.com and did a search for decisive games that were seven moves or less, and found 652 such games. Then I further narrowed it down to just those games that ended in checkmate, or a position where a forced mate in a short number of moves is possible, as opposed to a resignation or a forfeit. This brought the number of games down to 130. Some of the games were exactly duplicated move for move, so removing the duplicates leaves us with 109 distinct games. Initially, my plan was to make a long video featuring all 109 games. But I told some of my family and friends that I was working on this project, and the vast majority of them said that I should break it down into 11 smaller videos with up to 10 games in each video. So that's what I'm doing. Gotta give the people what they want, right? That's why I'm your favorite YouTuber. If you haven't subscribed to me already, you may want to look in the mirror and re-evaluate your life choices. This series of videos has two purposes. One, to show you how to avoid getting checkmated early in the game, and two, to show you how my opening explorer works, in case you're not already familiar with it. I may make another video later explaining the opening explorer in more detail. I've been working on this thing for 13 years. It currently has 22,017 positions, and I'm always adding new openings to it. So hopefully it will be complete soonish. I don't mean this year, but hopefully within my lifetime. A lot of these checkmates are very similar to each other. For example, the same moves by the winning player, and almost the same moves, or the same moves but in a different order by the losing player. I'm including all of them so that you can see that there are multiple ways to fall into the same trap. One of the ideas of this video series is that you should learn from the mistakes of others because you won't live long enough to make them all yourself. For the purpose of this video and any video I might make about chess in the future, unless specifically stated otherwise I will refer to the player who has the first move as white and the other player as black. Also when I identify a game as player A versus player B, it means that player A had the first move. This is conventional. I'm going to list them alphabetically by opening moves for easy reference, with exceptions where necessary to make smooth segues. These games are all categorized by opening. The first opening we're going to look at is the Polish opening. Um, I'm going to show you three games with the Polish opening, and black wins all three of them. So not a good opening to play if you're white. So this is my opening explorer. Uh, I built it from scratch and maintain it pretty much all by myself. I did invite some friends and relatives to help me with it, but none of them was interested. Go figure, right? So we have the name of the opening that led to this position above the board. Um, a recommended move just below the board. Uh, and a list of all possible moves in this position. Uh, for some positions I didn't include every move as some are not likely to ever actually be played in serious games. Here I have a list of moves and pro tip the first move on the list is always the recommended move. In general I try to have the moves listed in order from best to worst but in some cases I got lazy and just listed them in the order I thought of them, and then put the recommended move at the top of the list. The score indicates who's winning. Positive numbers are better for white, negative numbers are better for black. Anything over 90 or under negative 90 
is a forced mate. The name field contains um, the, um, the name uh, and also the ECO code. Uh, sorry, ECO stands for Encyclopedia of Chess Openings. There's more info. Uh, there's more info about openings on my openings.html page. Uh, the continuation is uh, what the recommended move will be for the other player after this move is made. Um, if it says unknown, that just means I haven't added this position to the data file yet. Uh, finally, the fan column um, is a computer readable and somewhat human readable, depending on the human, format for describing a board position. Fen stands for Forsyth Edwards Notation. But my version of Fen is a little bit different from actual Fen because I wanted to make it more compact. Uh, I may go into more detail in a future video. One final note before we get into it. Uh, I know lots of programming languages, but English is the only human language I'm fluent in, so if I mispronounce any names, please correct me in the comments. Here we go. Game 1. Maria Brichinova versus Elka Alexandrova, Pernica, Bulgaria, 1979. By the way, for those of you unfamiliar with chess algebraic notation, in a nutshell, each square on the board is given grid coordinates with the letter between A and H, uh, corresponding to the files or columns, with A being the queen's rooks file, and H being the king's rooks file, and a number between 1 and 8 corresponding to the rank or row, with 1 being closest to white and 8 being closest to black. A one-letter abbreviation is used for each piece, with K being the king and N being the knight, um, since we can't use K twice. If no piece is named in the move notation, you should assume that it is a pawn move. For more details, see the rules page on my website. So the game goes like this. B4, C6, that's the outflank variation. Bishop b2, queen b6, a3, uh, a5, c4, e6, that's the Katalamov gambit. C5, Bishop kills C5, uh, and here comes the mistake, Bishop kills G7, um, a lot of different moves could have uh, led to checkmate here, and black wins uh, with Bishop kills F2 mate. So that's the pawn there, diagonal from the king. Uh, the second game we're going to look at is Anonymous versus Mountain Man 1, an online game. Uh, it started similarly with the Polish opening, um, but this time black plays e5. a3. This is the boogie of attack. d5. C3, Knight F6, did it not go, Knight F6, okay, F3, uh, and black's already winning here, um, White's going to make more mistakes. Um, B6. G4. That's even worse. Uh, it gives black a very clear win. It gives black a way to win uh, a lot of material. Knight E4. 
it's okay. Knight kills g4 also works, as you can see. Uh, and then here is, of course, the fatal blow. F kills e4. And then black wins with queen h4 mate. So he's going to get his queen out to the side of the board and get the king on that diagonal. Game three. Um, so it's going to start with the same uh, move there and then white's second move is bishop b2 uh, this is dr j versus mr k played in new york 1876 um we have bishop d6 the stabino variation i might have mispronounced that if i did you know tell me in the comments f4 E kills f4. Bishop kills g7. So white's winning here, but white won't always be winning, as we know. Uh, queen h4 check. Uh, g3 uh, looks like it's the only legal move, so that's what has to happen. Um, f kills g3. Uh, knight f3. Oh, there it is. And black mates in 2. So g kills h2 check. Knight kills h4. Uh, so sacrificing the queen and then bishop g3 is checkmate. Uh, this game was played at the New York Chess Club in 1876. Apparently both players played so badly that they were too embarrassed to use their full names. The next opening we want to look at is the English opening. I'm going to show you six games with the English opening. Of those, white wins only one and black wins five. So game number four is DeFrankel versus Anonymous, Helsinki, Finland, 1934. Uh, I'm going to go back to... Oh, here. C4 is the first move. Um, there it is. C5. Knight C3. This is the normal variation. Some English symmetrical normal E6. Um, Knight F3. Knight E7. Knight e4, f5, uh oh, that's a mistake. And then white wins with knight d6 mate. There you go. Because the knight hits the king there and also on the f7 square. Game 5, um, also in English, Spencer, uh, J. Spencer versus Tack X, Dayton, USA, 1981. So now black plays E5, which is called the Bremen defense. And then we have B3. Bishop C5. Okay. Knight C3. Queen f6, bishop b2, uh oh, that's a mistake. And then there are two possible checkmates, um, and Tack X chose queen kills f2 mate. Um, obviously, bishop kills f2 also works. Uh, this is just another variation on the scholar's mate. Um, so, game six is Dirk Poldauf versus Christian Stoitman. Rerick, East Germany, 1980. Um, so it starts off uh, the same moves by uh, white and black, but then white's second move is knight c3, which is the reversed Sicilian. And then we have knight f6, which is the two knights variation. Knight f3. Knight c6. 
uh, the Fortnite system number two. Um, reverse closed Sicilian. Uh, G3 is the Kingside Fianch Fianchetto line. I've been saying Fianchetto my whole life, and someone recently corrected me. And now, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for this old dog to learn a new trick. Um, it, but it, it is pronounced Fianchetto. Uh, so we got Bishop C5. Knight kills E5. Knight kills E5. D4. Queen E7. D kills C5. It's coming up. Oh, oh. That's a mistake. And then black, of course, wins. Knight F3, mate. Um, game 8. Or, no, sorry, uh, Game 7. Uh, B. Venema versus P. Sudeman. Kroning in the Netherlands, 1993. So this time, Black's response to C4 is E6. And that is called the Agincourt defense. Um, knight C3. Knight f6, that's called the hedgehog system, or a transposition of the hedgehog system. Transposition just means it's the same moves, but in a different order. Um, e4, the Flora Mykinus Carls variation, number 2. Knight c6, this is the Kevitz variation. Knight g e2. b6. g3. Knight e5. That would be the recommended move, obviously. And then white plays b3, which is a mistake. Um, there are actually a lot of moves that lose here, b3 being one of them. Um, and then there are two ways black could win, and uh, Sudeman chooses knight f3 mate. Um, knight d3, of course, also works. And now we get to game 8, which is anonymous versus anonymous, the only game in this whole series where uh, the identities of neither player is known. Um, so again, it's an English opening, and Black's reply is knight c6, which is called uh, the Anglo-Lithuanian variation. Um, and e3, knight b4, and then comes the whoopsie, knight e2, and as you see, black mates in one with knight d3, mate, knight goes here, and the king can't go anywhere because he's blocked in by his own pieces. That's called a smothered mate. Um, we now look at game number nine, which is the last game in the first of the videos. Um, so who have we got? Tony Amantia versus Tim Trogdon, Dayton, USA, 1979. And it goes like this. This time, um, instead of knight c6, it's going to be knight f6, which is called the Anglo-Indian defense. Uh, knight c3, the queen's knight variation, e6. Um, and that's, again, the hedgehog system, which is what we saw before in Venema versus Sudeman. Um, the rest of the game is almost exactly the same, except for uh, white's final move. Um, so you got e4 for my Kinus Carl's variation, number two. Um, knight c6, Kevitz variation. Knight g e2. b6. g3. Knight e5, 
And then white's move is d4, which is just as bad as uh, the other move that was done. Um, and again, uh, black wins with knight f3, mate. So again, it's, it's almost um, a smothered mate. So the king could try to go to d2, but he still loses because the knight here will get him here. Um, this one's actually pretty interesting because uh, black was threatening mate two different ways. Um, yeah, we saw that, knight f3 or knight d3. And it, it was hard for white to see a way to avoid both mates. His final move did indeed prevent one of the mates. You see, there's only one way to mate here. Um, this concludes part one in the series. Now, please watch part two. The link is in the description.